Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your June 16th to the 22nd, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. It gets the channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much. It gets it out there to more people. So thank you. Now, as always, the cards will tell you what you need to know, not what you want to know. Let's begin. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, we're going to have to... <laughs> we'll layer them as we go. Spirit is chatty. Okay, so we are crowned here with the Page of Pentacles reverse. Now, this is Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We are, are having a bit of a difficult time right now being a student at things. I can feel a lot during this time that you're starting from, okay, I'm just catching up with Spirit. Right, you're starting from the very beginning at things or you feel like you know you're always thinking at something it's like oh i have to do this and i'm having to learn how to do this and everybody else just gets it and it's almost like everybody's dancing a dance that they all know the steps to but you've never seen before and that can be really really frustrating during this time but this is a huge time of perseverance and this is a, also a huge time of connecting with your inner prosperity and your inner bounty and how you view wealth or what you value as much as money. And this is also a time to connect with your inner child and to really see yourself saying, I deserve to be wealthy and to believe it full heartedly and absolutely. The inner child meditation could be absolutely fantastic to start off with. You know, taking a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you and seeing yourself, visualizing yourself as the adult you are now, holding your arms open to the child that you once were and let that kid run into your arms and swoop them up and tell them you are successful. You are prosperous. You are brilliant. You achieve your dreams, even if it doesn't always look the way that you envisioned them. And see how that inner child responds. See how you, throughout the ages, respond to that statement being told to your younger self. Because it moves us then to the Seven of Cups reverse. And the Seven of Cups, yeah. So the Seven of Cups here, there, there is a sense of, you know, what do I want? What am I moving forward towards? Where do I need to be? What do I desire? What am I looking for? And we are going to be seeing ourselves during this time, making choices, looking at our dreams, because the Seven of Cups is our dreams. But with it reverse, it's like, I don't get to have my dreams. I don't, I don't get to, I don't get to connect. Like I've put my dreams either, I put them on the shelf to look at every now and then to take them down and to, you know, smile at wistfully as, as I start to believe they'll never happen. Or as I look at them and say, oh no, you know, this world is too, too harsh for the beauty that you have dreamt. And this is going to be a time where we start looking at our dreams and saying, why can't I bring them forward? Why can't they be a part of me now? And we're going to be in a little bit of a battle with ourselves. It moves us to the high priestess. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That as we're questioning why I don't get to have my dreams, and it doesn't mean the mansion on top of the hill driving, you know, the Rolls Royce type of deal. What it means is the essence of your soul coming forward and the high priestess is the veil being lifted from your eyes. You seeing things so much more clearly for yourself, but also seeing things so much more clearly in the world around you. What has held you back? What has moved you forward? Where you want to be, where you don't want to be, what you desire from life, what you're afraid of and everything in between. And Sagittarius, it's, it's a sense of I'm connecting with spirit, but I'm also connecting with the inner beauty, the inner power of my own psychic, empathic, you know, emotional development. It brings us to the nine of cups. And it's very interesting that we have such strong water sign energy coming forward, which is, you know, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. So if we're born on the cusp with Scorpio, if we have water sign energy in our chart, that comes through very powerfully, just as if we're born on the cusp with Capricorn or we have earth sign energy in our chart, that comes through very powerfully here as well. And it's Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. The nine of cups is a wish. It is across our fingers. I want this. I want to achieve this wish. It's not the soul's wish. Okay. So we're going to see ourselves looking at what we desire, what we're wishing for, what we want. And we're going to see ourselves starting to, to like kind of 
add up little wins. And those little wins make us feel really good about ourselves because we've been really harsh on ourselves. So we feel like, you know, it's just one challenge after another, after another. And it brings us then to Scorpio energy. So if you're born on the cusp with Scorpio, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Or if you have Scorpio within your heart, within your heart, within, within your chart, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> I do apologize. We are, are fighting a transformation during this time. And we're looking at ourselves in a very different way. And we're looking at what we desire in a very different way from what we had seen once upon a time. And we're going to start to, to feel like we're kind of trapped. We can feel like we're trapped in our own skin. We can feel like we're trapped in the world around us. We just feel a little bit trapped. So just be aware of this. And then the King of Swords comes comes forward and this is air sign energy gemini libra aquarius we are coming out of gemini time period during this time so that is going to be impactful that was actually a very good time period for us it's a sister it's our sister sign so gemini either builds us up really really well or we find it challenging there's no in between and with the king of of air there's the sense of cutting through doubts and fears and negativities, hurts, pains, disappointments, knowing our voice, knowing what we desire, knowing what we want, and looking at things so openly and honestly for ourselves. We are going to be very logical during this time as well. So we can see our logic as a bit of a superpower for us, really working things out, finding the, our footing, embracing our voice, knowing what we desire with the King of Swords here. Also, there's a sense of, I know what I've trained for right? The swords is the only weapon within the tarot. And with the swords coming forward, there's a sense of, I know the trials and tribulations I have been through in my life. I have known when I was weak and I know when I am strong. And here it is embracing our strength, but it's also embracing the strength through learning, through understanding weakness, through seeing ourselves in different ways and in, in different kind of like incarnations of our being, because we all go through different incarnations in our being in just this one lifetime. And it brings us then to the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles is wealth and prosperity and bounty and abundance. It's reverse. So there's something here where we feel like, well, there's a generational curse, right? I'm not able to move forward because I have this baggage around me. Now, it can be how we were raised. It can be, you know, something that we went through in our lives that really shook us financially. It can be that we look at people and say, this is what success looks like, but it doesn't actually look like that for us. We need to look at ourselves and say, what is my prosperity and what is my abundance? So being aware of that with the 10 of pentacles is going to be really important here as well, because we're going to start to say, you know what? No, I'm not behind the eight ball. Like I'm not, I'm not cursed. I'm not cursed. I just have to go about this game of life differently and look at what I really want and not what people say I should want or how I should be. It brings us then to justice. This is Libra energy time frame, September 23rd to October 22nd. If we have Libra in our chart, if we have Libra in our life, this comes through very positively, but it's also balancing the scales. It is seeing justice for ourselves coming forward. You know, it's being just with ourselves. And that's going to be a really important thing. The seven, it's very interesting. We end with two sevens. You know, we begin this reading with a seven reverse. We end the the body of the reading with a with a seven reverse. And seven is a truth number. This can be a time, and you know what's really funny, Sagittarius, is that you're the second justice, you know, card in this in this game, in this, in this scheme of life. So we have the justice card here, which represents justice, right? And then we have Sagittarius energy represented by the by the temperance card and that represents truth so it's truth and justice they work together in tandem to bring forward justice into our world and here with the seven of pentacles we are not being patient okay we we want things to move forward we're kind of like you know what i've wasted too much time already i've wasted too much time it's not, it has to be this it has to be that and spirits like slow it down and see yourself because you haven't wasted any time everything you've lived through Everything you've been through, everything you are has cultivated you and shaped you. Be patient with yourself. We're not going to want to be patient with everyone, with anyone. We want everything, you know, yesterday. We want to move things forward and have them fall into line like little toy soldiers type of deal. So just be aware of this during this time. It moves us then. But also we get called out 
during this time, we will be called out if we do little white lies, like little like, oh, it's no big deal type of thing. And it's no big deal, but we'll get called out, whereas others, you know, won't. So just be aware of that. That can really grate on us. Let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. This is centered reverse. We are out of center with ourselves. And when we are out of center, Sagittarius, it affects us more than it does others. Because again, we're temperance, we're harmony. We need to be in harmony with us. Even if nobody else gets where we're coming from, we need to see ourselves and get where we're coming from. So working on being centered, working on calming, stabilizing, you know, aligning ourselves. And even if that means that we kind of feel outside the, the chaotic humdrum of the world, that's okay. That's okay. As somebody who, who feels like that's where, where I myself land, it's like, okay, I can, I can accept this part of me. I can accept who I am. And that does take time, especially if you feel like you stick out, even if you try to blend in. And people are always like, oh, wow, you're just so uniquely you. And you're like, I was trying to be like everybody else. What the heck? So just be aware of that. It moves us then to our chakra energy angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, this one? Yeah, this one. And show me clearly. This is family. This is the root chakra. So this is family, whether it is the family we were born into, the family that raised us, the family that loved us, the family that we've created for ourselves. We need to connect with the root chakra and family. And even if this is also the family of our past life self coming together, like all the different incarnations of our being coming forward, which that, that's kind of really pretty. Let's see what energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading. This is the hangman reverse. Okay. So the hangman is enlightenment, but it's, it's painful, right? Because nobody sees things, this and thinks, Oh, comfortable, right? Nobody sees hanging from one foot with, you know, your, your mouth you know, gagged and your arms tied behind your back as, as comfortable. It's just not. And here we're going to see ourselves doubting whether the discomfort of standing out of looking at things differently, of not being a part of, of the herd or like everybody else is worth it. And so we can kind of change ourselves during this time. And this is going to be a moment where we have a choice. It's like, do I choose being me? Do I choose the high priestess? Do I choose the veil being lifted from my eyes? Kind of like a layer of the cocoon that we are wrapped in being, being opened and then moving forward towards a deeper understanding of what I want and who I am and what I love. Or do I choose what everybody else is doing? And that's a personal choice. And there's no wrong answer. It moves us to the crowning energy of this reading. And that is to be a student of our prosperity. But it's also the fact that we're fighting being a student of our prosperity, of wealth and what we value as much as money. There's something coming in that's like, you take the gold coin, right? But it smacks your hand. You take the gold coin, it smacks your hand. You're not allowed to be wealthy. You're not allowed to be prosperous. You're not allowed to have this. How dare you even? Where does that come from? Is it money is the root of all evil? Is that the state statement? Is it that you you have to give away everything that, that's worth something because you're being nice and generous and you're helping out others? What is it that is keeping us right now, Sagittarius, from embracing our prosperity and seeing ourselves as entitled to being wealthy and to valuing money or what we value as much as money in our lives? We need to connect with our dreams. We have lost, we have lost a part of our truth Okay, and that's the seven reversed here. We have lost a part of our truth. We have lost a part of what's really intrinsically important to us. And, and now we're questioning everything, which is, you know, the Sagittarian way to question everything. But we need to focus on our dreams. We need to see our dreams again. We need to gain an understanding of ourselves and what we love and what we want and where we want to be and not, and not be so precious with our dreams and what we desire. Not sit there and be like, oh, no, but, it, but, but I can't possibly. It's like, oh, yes, I can. And I'm going to do so with a grace and a beauty that says, even if, even if it messes up, right? Even if the dream doesn't come out the way that we had planned, it would. We have brought our dream forward in this beautiful world and in the time that we have on this beautiful world. And that, that is an extraordinary feat that most people never do. It brings us to seeing ourselves differently. It brings us again to the veil being lifted from our eyes and us seeing us beginning to understand, us looking at things and saying, well, you know what? Everybody has to be a beginner. You know what? Everybody has to gain an understanding. Oh, I thought I could trust those people, but 
now I'm starting to actually listen to what they're saying. And it's not, it's either that they're contradicting, contradicting themselves, or it is that their words do not match their actions. And that is going to be very important here. We're starting to see things. We're becoming much more observant. And again, we can find it highly uncomfortable. We can say, no, no, thank you to the high priestess. Or we can say, yes, I see. I see. And I want to see more. I want to go deeper. We're getting, we're getting what we wish for. We're starting to look and, and see little winds come forward, which is fantastic because that's really going to spur us on. It's not like, oh my gosh, one failure after another, after another. Though, believe me, we've gone through those times and they've been, they've been relatively recently. We are going through a transformation, but we are afraid of what that transformation will bring. We are afraid next step. We are afraid of the openness or the rawness or the intensity of tomorrow's. So just being aware of that during this time is going to be important because it's like, okay, if I let go of my fear and I transform, what is the worst thing that, I, that can happen? It's kind of like being a Pokemon, right? And leveling up. <laughs> Use Pokemon as an example, because why the heck not? And it's like, well, what will my evolved form be? Will it be something awesome or will it be something that I look at and like, huh, that's weird. So just, yeah, just view it as a game. I mean, it sounds silly to say, but it's important. And a good Pokemon reference is always needed. And then we have here the King of Swords. And the King of Swords is, is cutting through our doubts and our fears, the hurts and the pains that we have been through. It is embracing our voice. It is gaining a deeper understanding of ourselves. It is knowing what we want. You know, it's a real sense also of saying, I'm a warrior in this life because we all are. No matter, you know, what we've been through, no matter where we are, we are warriors because from the moment we are born, there's, you know, there's something to fight for. You know, there, there's something to grow for, to strive for. And so it's embracing that within ourselves. It's not saying, oh no, I have to be completely passive. A lot of times, especially if we are of a gentler ten temperament, which I'm, I'm assuming that most of you are, if you found this channel, that you're of a gentler temperament, but it doesn't mean that you don't get to be fierce too. That even in your gentleness, which if you keep a gentleness in this crazy, harsh, cruel world, that is a strength that most people overlook and think, oh, well, they're just simple. It's like, no, you're not at all. You're choosing kindness. You're choosing love. You're choosing this path. And you're looking at yourself here because so many of your gifts, Sagittarius, right now are not in the monetary or we're not quite sure how to monetize them or things, you know, aren't quite going the way that we had planned and we're looking at things to be like why why is this so confusing and we're thinking i'm cursed like this is a generational curse when the 10 of of pentacles comes reversed it's like okay what generational curse am i dealing with and what am i carrying over that i think oh well this is the way it has to be because this is the way it's always been even if it's just subconsciously which i say just and that's a big deal that even if it's subconsciously here with the 10 of pentacles what is it that has has to be or gets to be a lack in my life because I saw it growing up or I experienced it in a relationship that really formed me and shaped me. And this is going to be a time where we find justice for ourselves, where we shatter the curse, we break the curse, we break the spell and we start to find balance. We start to find understanding and we don't want to be patient anymore. It's like, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of being patient and being, you know, calm and being respectful and, you know, waiting my turn while everybody else just like charges forward and, and rips away success and, and prosperity and takes what's theirs and you know what even isn't theirs and says, mine, mine, mine. We're tired of that. And so we want to say, well, now my turn. But we don't want to be part of the ravenous dog horde. You know, we don't. If there's anything wrong with dogs, but ravenous ones are, are scary. And so here there is this real sense of, can I see that my can I see my power power? Can I see me? And can I respect me? Because we're going to get wins and we're going, we're fighting a transformation. And it's like, what am I fighting for? What am I fighting towards? What is it that I want to build? And that is a really big question during this time. And, and I swear to you, the, the month of June, the whole month, I know we're talking about this specific week, but the whole month of June is, is so important to, to setting our goal for the whole rest of the year. We, we see that with the, with the new moon that was on the 6th, right? Yeah, the sixth or the seventh, I think it was the sixth, where we we work towards the goal for the rest of the year. That's our last six months period. 
it ends the full moon in Gemini is on December 17th. What are we building? How are we changing our world by December? What are we going for? And here, it's seeing ourselves as prosperous. And it's letting us be prosperous without, you know, being terrified. Okay, if I even get a little bit of prosperity, then everything's going to fall apart. You know, I just have to wait for the next shoe to drop type of deal. It moves us then to our subconscious spirit message. And this is confidence. It's embracing subconsciously. We have a tremendous amount of confidence and it's embracing it. And it's saying, no, I'm entitled to this. Have you ever seen people who aren't really talented at all, but they have this tremendous confidence and they're like, yeah, I can do anything. And people are like, yeah, you can. And you're looking at them. They're like, not, not talented, not, you know, anything special, but because they believe it so fervently, they get others to believe it too. It moves us then to our chakra message. And subconsciously, we are connected with our solar plexus chakra. It is self-mastery. It is a connection with ourself. It is a connection with what we want. It's listening to our gut. And it's knowing that we really are attuned to the world around us, but also to what we desire to create and cultivate within our lives. It brings us then to our energy to be mindful of. And this is the three of wands. Be mindful that doors are opening. Be mindful that people are going to be like, oh, go meet this way, come this way, come this way. Listen to you, Sagittarius. Because this is going to be a time where you can get really pulled in with get rich quick seams or, you know, people wanting you to, you know, work on, on what they're doing and not what you're doing or look, work for their prosperity and not for your prosperity. So just be mindful about this. So wrap it up real nice, but it's not going to be really nice in the long run. It moves us then to our subconscious tarot message, and that's the six of cups. And the six of cups is a connection with our childhood, with what we've dreamt of, with how we want to move things forward. We can be very nostalgic during this time, but this nostalgia is a very good thing. It's like I'm taking all the best pieces of my past and I'm making the most beautiful future for myself. And I'm not being caught in the, oh, well, the past is gone. You know, I can't have this. I can't have that. It's like, oh no, but you are extraordinary. And now it's time to see that extraordinariness within you. All right. All right, Sagittarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take, oh, and please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.